Good evening everyone, my name is James Rantray, I'm the chairman of the Soldiers of Killy Cranky group, a local constituted group here that has a particular interest in our battlefield. In this, our fourth story from Killy Cranky Battlefield, we look at the evidence and trace the battle line that day 331 years ago. We explain why we believe the A9 already bisects the battle line. Everyone else has always put the battle line to the south of the A9, which we do. We also believe the line extends across to the north side. And this is where the majority of the 2,500 men died that day. We also put forward our assessment on where we believe the A9 should go through the battlefield if it was to cause least amount of destruction. This video, along with our third story from Killiecrankie Battlefield, raises a number of questions about Transport Scotland's assessment. Some of Transport Scotland's information is dubious at best and merits further investigation. The decision about the future Killiecrankie Battlefield is now with Scottish Government Ministers. I'm asking for your help. If we're going to make the ministers believe that the Jacobite battlefield here is worth preserving for future generations. So how can you help us? First of all, please share this video with anyone who you think might care about Scottish and Jacobite history in particular. And secondly, for those of you who live in Scotland, I'm asking you, please, will you contact your MSP, your member of the Scottish Parliament? and make them aware that the decision here is of national importance. It's not a local issue. This is our Scottish history, our Scottish Jacobite history. Remember, your member of Scottish Parliament, MSP, is your representative in that Parliament, and only through them can you get your voice heard. Finally, it's good to, for us all to remember that we are the custodians of our nation's history for future generations. This is happening on our watch now, and only by us working together on this will we stand a chance of helping to preserve it for future generations. On a personal note, I have to say I've learned more about Killiecrankie Battlefield than I have ever imagined I would know. And I continue to learn more about the battlefield. Please enjoy this video and help us in this cause. Okay, what we're looking at here, this is, this marks the centre of the battlefield. This is all, in all likelihood, this is Run Rory, the uh, Rory's high field or Rory's flat sloping field. Uh, this is where the cavalry were. So the knoll is right over on the, on the far right, beyond those sheep. Yeah. You can see. The field of battle at Killiecrankie stretches from the Alt Clune on the left to the Alt Gurnig on the right. Killiecrankie is here, the village. The River Gary is to the south. And the first point we're going to stop and talk about are the two knolls at this position. David, what are you looking to do? Uh, well, I want to look at the, the uh, uh, we're on the, uh, the left flank of the government troops and I want to look at the, the two no, knolls at uh, potential sites where Mackay refers to knolls being, uh, the, a lauder being stationed at the knolls. Um, so we have one knoll down there which is most people contend as being the knoll where the troops were stationed and we have a much more pronounced one here up, up here. Um, so I want to have a look at those. One thing we noticed is that uh, most of the battle lines that uh, we see in, in publications actually show the A9. Uh, and in my opinion, that, that does colour people's interpretation. Obviously, the, the A9 wasn't, uh, wasn't here during the battle, so it shouldn't really be shown in the, in the battle lines if people are going to do a proper interpretation of it. Yeah, what a commanding position. Yeah, very. My assessment, I think it's, it, you can see, I mean, if you, you just look around to see how commanding the position is. Uh, and also, like we've already said, is that you, you look down the other side, you could have hundreds of men there. Yeah, you could. Yeah. From there, you wouldn't know they were there. No, you wouldn't. If you're on the second knoll, they could just use this as a... They can start, yeah. 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 
Yeah. So, this so you would have taken this to avoid the Highlanders taking it. <coughs> and, and considering so. that Mackay was so so worried about being outflanked, yep. uh, you, you know, he, there's no way they would have left this without troops in there. Yeah. No. From a soldier's point of view, this is a perfect spot to observe, yeah. to garrison, yeah. to shoot from. Yeah. But again, from a clever soldier's point of view, it's a clever place to run off and escape from quickly if you can see the battle's not going your way. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. It's a, I mean, from here, you definitely see it all the way down the line. Yeah. You know? We're here today just trying to understand by walking the government positions, understanding where the, the archaeology was found, and just seeing the possibility or examining the possibility that the knoll that featured in the battle is the one we're standing on, rather than the, than the one which is for slightly further south. Um, and <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to have a go at uh, pegging out a line, showing potential position of the government line. We're going to talk about that line in relationship to the archaeology that's been found on the field as well. So here we have the shaded relief, which uh, shows the knolls, the two potential knolls here. Uh, this is the one which is on the, they're both on the left hand side of uh, Mackay's lines. Uh, traditionally this has been pointed out as being where the Mackay had his left wing, this is where Lauder was stationed. Um, and most people discount this as being not the location where Lauder was. Um, this, we can see here where the archaeology has taken place. We've got the, the metal detecting, these lines here show the limits of the metal detecting. Uh, we can see there's hardly anything being found around this knoll. Well, around this knoll, we've got all we've got things like uh, buckles, uh, small arms fire like pistols, which are indicative of very close combat. Uh, pistol, they say, is only effective or accurate within about 10 meters. Yeah. Although, Sorry. obviously, if the ball carries on, they say it will kill people at uh, longer ranges. That is interesting. You can see the, the the crosses. I think are the pistol Sp shot. Are they crosses or splatter? Oh, splatter. Okay. Yeah, so very small dots are yeah. pistol, larger dots are musket. Okay, okay. So you can see some of them are larger, some of them are smaller. But it's interesting, if, if that a line was down here, that's a lot of these finds are right on where the line might have been or just to the front of it. I think so. I think yeah. buckles, I mean, that sort of thing means the troops were standing there. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is not carry on fire from a, no. a long way off. There's no. no way they were down here and, right. and these are all ending no, no. up here. Yeah. And certainly buckles. Yeah. You know, that, that the only way they're going to end up being there is if people were standing there. That's right. So how much around this bottom one? Talk, talk about the issues there for being on the left, on the archaeology. Well, for, from the archaeology, there's, there's nothing here. Um, this, this is the yeah. boundary of the archaeology. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there, there could be something further south. They yeah. just haven't done the archaeology here. But, there's, you know, we've got two, two items found, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. Um, so to me, that... That, make that makes this a less good candidate for being a site. And also just looking at this in terms of what would be visible in the landscape, um, this is a far more pronounced yes. uh, feature. Yeah. You know, you, you, could, you, could, you could be right down where Mackay was, right in the center yeah. there, looking up here. Yep. Would up. he actually register that as being a knoll? Doubt, yeah. Doubtful. This, this, is, this is very, and, and also it has trees as, as it is now. Also, would you position your army behind a, a knoll like that? No. No, so you wouldn't. You'd put no. it on the, on the forward knoll. Yeah. This is the 1945 aerial um, map of the area. And we, and we know from Mackay's own account that he put Lauder's regiment, which had a number of experienced men, on this knoll. And presumably part of the logic of that was to hold the left flank of his, of his line. And it looks like a perfect anchor point to, to anchor your left flank yeah, anyway. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because, you know, then your, your officers can come along and deploy your troops. And, and interesting in the Gallic, uh, Alt Kluin, um, Kluin can mean green meadow, but it can also mean ambush. Really? So we have a number of Gallic names here that may be associated with the battle. And, what do you, and that's what, I don't know if he actually said it, but the other thing, I mean, it's just reflecting what you were saying there, but. If, if you had your troops stationed here, you would have no idea what was behind the knoll. No. Yeah. And you, you know, the Jacobites could have gone down there, could have had a hundred yeah. men behind the knoll ready to come down, outflank you. Yeah. So yeah. it's 
Yeah, yeah. It you just were... reinforces it, I think. It's, uh... yeah, exactly. And we've got to bear in mind, like I say, that Mackay was a very seasoned veteran of campaigns and battles. Yeah. And, uh, and he knew about all of this basic sort of stuff. And there were experienced troops there alongside him yeah. who'd fought in some of these campaigns. Yes, yeah, yeah. They would be offering advice saying, we need to get somebody on there. Yeah. You look at this knoll, and it is very prominent. And you go around there, and it's hardly, you know... It looks like just part of the, yeah, the general yeah. landscape, but yeah. similar to what you might see any, elsewhere on the slope. That's right. So I, I wouldn't, if you hadn't told me that was a second knoll, I wouldn't know it was there. No, not from here. You, you wouldn't know. From, from down there, down there so you might. see it, but here, yeah, yeah. not. No. I believe this is the knoll, uh, based on the fact that of what the, the archaeology. You know, mm -hmm. they're finding these all these small shots, the pistol shots. They're finding buckles, um, and they're finding them in this, in this area. No doubt they're not, fi they're not finding anything further down. You yeah. know, two shots is all, that, all they're yeah. finding and quite easy. That could have been part of the escaping yeah. troops yeah. trying to get away. Run away, yeah. shoot yeah. the runners. Shoot the yeah. runners. If we Im imagine the A9 was not there, yeah. Mackay's regiment would be... I don't know if you can see that telegraph pole yeah. at the end of that line of trees. That, oh, yeah. That's yeah. roughly the line. Yeah. And that sort of makes sense. No. Is, that, is that roughly the line that you've... Is it? Is that the other side of the uh, where, do, where does your line well, potentially that's where cross? I have the ladder on the on the left flank here, yeah. which is on the knoll. Uh, we've had a look last time. We had a look at the, uh, this musket shot here, Mackay's with, regiment. Yeah. Mackay's regiment with this very short uh, shooting range that yep. we saw on the bank here. Yeah. Um, uh, so that we've hooked it. Locked it on the, the uh, on the knoll, put it through this location here, and this is where it projects down here. Okay. Yeah. Um, there is some other evidence to suggest where the troops were positioned, and that's in the centre, and that's to do with uh, these collection of musket ball found here. So we're going to examine the government line, and we believe the reason for our examination is we believe there's a very strong argument that the government line, in fact, was slightly further forward from previously thought, uh, and we think that that is borne out not only by the strategic position of this knoll, but also by the archaeological finds that are found on the field below. We then lay the flags out from this knoll across to here. The other question is how would the if they if they are coming down in a mass a mass body, what about the men off the side? What would they be doing? Yeah. yeah. Would, would they, they be, be firing, firing in from the side? Would they? Would I they? Don't know. I mean, would there be a would they would their yeah. training allowed them to have done? I that? think so. I think yeah. so. I, it's a perfect vantage point, and like we said earlier when we were on the knoll, it's great from a sharpshooter's point of view. You said good quality troops have been put on there, yeah. so some of your best marksmen are on there. You're going to be aiming at this uh, Highlander army. So where we're standing is the McLeans of Duet were advancing down. There's a large group of men, uh, one of the well-disciplined uh, Highland forces that, on the day. We know that the uh, Dunya Ursula, the gentlemen of the clan, many of them would have been armed with pistols, uh, and Dundee had given them very strict orders to only fire within 20 paces of the enemy. Uh, so as we advance, we're still well over that. So by this stage, the Highlanders would probably be in full run, uh, screaming their battle cry, uh, <coughs> advancing towards the government line. We know actually that Balfour's regiment and some of Lauder's regiment had probably turned and run by this stage. So even though they're closing in on the line, uh, <coughs> it's quite interesting uh, and useful to think the Highlanders if we believe Cameron of Lochiel's account, if they held their discipline, they were only firing, starting to probably fire around now, and the bag in front of us marks 20 paces from the government line. So it may be they fired at this point. At this point they did, it went through perhaps the bending of the knee where they dropped, placed their weapons on the ground, drew their swords, placed their targes in front of them, and then this was the absolute final sprint in towards the enemy. We cross under the A9, 
This is the boggy ground and this is the next position we talk about. So we've crossed the A9 and what we're doing now is we're finding where we think the probability the Scottish Government line is and this is David up in front of us who's standing on where he believes the Scottish Government line would have been just to the left of our house. So this is having started about the... At, at the knoll, we've uh, shown the projected line of flags and we've crossed over the A9 uh, to be on the, the Gary side of the A9 and we're going to walk along this here, walk along this line uh, as far as we can and pick out where the government troops would have been. So we're standing now in front of the Arad outhouses at the very top of the field that's opposite these outhouses and Arad House is behind the trees here somewhere. Okay. So this line goes in front of Arad, which ties in with Mackay's account. Yeah, and we see the, the original house, which was before Arad House, uh, would have been in the trees there. It had its own garden, enclosed garden area, and it wasn't as far up as this what we ha what we see here now, which is the, the, the garden which is associated with Arad House. So this would have been fields, just normal fields. Yeah. So we're going to cross now to the other side of our road. On the Gary side of the A9, so we crossed the A9 from where we were previously. Uh, the Arad house is just in the distance, uh, behind these trees here. Uh, which And the, the original house which would have preceded Arad house uh, would have been also in, in behind these trees. It had a small garden area which didn't extend as far as the, the present garden uh, and walled garden here. Uh, so this area would have been uh, original open pastures or whatever they had uh, and of course none of the banks that are a are result of the present A9 would have been there. This would have been more or less clear sight uh, as we've already seen on the other side. Show us where the War Memorial is, the current cairn. The current cairn is there, there's a flag in the distance where you can see where the cairn is. So this, this is your line over the A9. Yeah and we're going to continue it to the other side of our house. Right. Now is uh, where we plot the line to be. We then go between the A9 and the wall garden and we talk here. Uh, we can see, uh, well obviously the A9, we've got the embankment for the A9, uh, we've got the, the back of Urut House and the, the present wall garden, which wouldn't have been uh, in this location, there wouldn't have been any wall garden, this would have been fields uh, when the battle took place. Uh, this is the boggy ground, uh, this is where we think Mackay was stationed and now we have these two distributions of shot. We have this blue one which goes almost all the way up up the hill here. Uh, we have the red one which goes to the limit of the archaeology so it's quite possible there is more in this area above here uh, and this indicates that you know the, the government troops are firing at uh, some, someone coming down the slope. Um, but what you're seeing here is the archaeology goes all the way down and there is a quite definite cutoff here where we're no longer seeing any musket shots. So to me what this says is that the government line was somewhere in here because we know that if you remember the previous uh, illustrations they're aiming at the 80 meter mark. The muskets are not obviously not going to hit the, the, the ground in front of them because there's going to be a certain distance in between and this is where the musket balls start to fall. Arad House is down here, D just to, okay. down here. This yeah. is the outline of the, of the new garden of Arad House. In Gaelic, we know the name for the battle was La Run Ruri, the day of Run, uh, Rory's high field. Run is a description of a very flat piece of ground. In this case, it's a flat sloping piece of ground, but on the whole battlefield, this is really, from here up to the Highland Line, is the only really flat ground. And it's also where the cavalry were placed. The house was known right into the 19th century as Lynn Rory. Yeah. yeah. But it actually means flat field. Do you think this is the original ground? There may be a very narrow strip here, but uh, obviously you've got the A9, the embankment, we've got the garden wall here, which was a later feature. This wasn't here at the battle. Uh, and there's some indication around the garden wall that it's actually, there may have been some landscaping associated with the, the garden 
So if there is a if there is a, a an original level, it's actually quite a narrow strip through here. Again, between the wall garden and the A9, we stop here. Actually, uh, looking at the plot for where the government, government line would have been, it would have been basically where the wall is now. So this is uh, a modern wall, which was built after the battle. So the, the front line of the government troops would have been uh, standing pretty much where the wall is here. Thank you. Standing now is where the uh, government front line of the government troops would have been. So just carrying on the projection to come on from the garden wall, the Udit House, the the, old, uh, the the new garden wall, which is wouldn't have been present during the battle. And uh, this is where the government troops would have been. This is close to Mackay's regiment's left wing. So what we're going to do is put a flag in here, and we'll just carry on our nine flags along the ridge. And again, we talk here, just the other side of the wall garden, and we lay the line of flags out on the battle line across to here. What we've done, moving on now, we're standing on the right wing of the government, the Scottish government army. This is where we're standing now, we're at this position, looking along the line to Mackay's and Leaven's regiment up here. If you look back down the line of flags there, that's uh, our estimate of where the government line stood. If you go right back to the furthest saltar you can see in the, di uh, sorry, the lion rampant, you can see in the distance there, that is where uh, General Hugh Mackay's own regiment, Mackay's regiment stood. That was the epicentre of the battle. The battle took place there between largely mainly Cameron's and Mackay's regiment. The fighting there, the hand-to-hand -hand fighting was incredibly intense uh, and then Mackay's regiment was completely decimated. Going further beyond that, towards the trees in the distance, we had Leven's regiment. And we know Leven's regiment did not have any direct opposition from the Jacobite army. None of the Jacobite regiments had been assigned to attack Leven's regiment. <clears throat> Coming closer this way, uh, we have Mackay's regiment uh, merging here on the right wing to Hastings regiment. And Hastings regiment was the only English regiment that fought in this battle. So th this, this is a continuation of the line that, uh, that we have created based on our understanding of the battlefield and where the government troops would have been. It's passed over the A9 and it's car carrying on here to the Gurnick. The A9 is, you can actually sometimes see a car go past up there, so it's, uh, it's not far away. Uh, just, just the fence line, I think, is the A9. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The government line, as we've positioned it today, has started off on the knoll, the, fo the forward knoll <coughs> that we started with this morning. It has come in a straight line up to this point, crossing the A9 just under the, around the bridge, where the bridge uh, over the road uh, on the government left wing right across here to, to where we stand now and we, I would estimate we are about a hundred paces from the A9 here but where Mackay's regiment stood were, would be slightly closer to where the A9 now runs. And to bear in mind that none of these trees, I mean what you're looking at here and all, all this obscured visibility, the ones up here are due to the A9 uh, the ones in the distance are due to the garden around Udit House and none of these would have been in, in place and it's, it's quite likely there would have been a clear, clear uh, field of view from here to up to the knoll. And also having walked it today like we've done guys, we can see that uh, from General Mackay's point of view he's hooked his left flank on the knoll which is a natural position, a, nice, a good place to anchor yeah. your left flank uh, all the way to here on the right flank not far from the Gurnig, which apart from being deep and fast flowing, is in quite a steep gorge leading all the way down to the River Gary as well. So he's literally covered the flanks reasonably well. Yeah, I mean, he, we know from his own accounts that he feared being outflanked. Yeah. So as we said earlier, he put Lauda as a very experienced regiment on the left flank on the knoll, and he had Hastings regiment here on the right 
protecting his right flank. He's made the best of a bad job. Yeah. I just think from the losing commander's point of view, coming through the, the gorge, the pass of Killy Cranky, he's then come out onto the plain alongside the river, and then suddenly been confronted by enemy forces in between him and Blair Castle. He's deployed his army in some form of line heading that way, and then realised up to his right, up to up north, along the hillside, is the uh, is the the real Highlander army, and he's had to somehow very very smoothly or quickly swing his army in a complete right turn to face the threat uphill, uh, and then he's got to think very rapidly as well for the preservation of his army and his uh, reputation, where to anchor his flanks. So I think generally, from a losing commander's point of view, he's, he's made the best of a bad job. Yeah. And what you're seeing here is, on the bottom here, we have where Transport Scotland have put the government troops, starting at this lower mains, is it? So I believe that this farm is called, uh, a small rise in the ground here. Uh, and then they have it coming across here, down the bottom here, down to here. This line, this continuous red line, is the, the position that we believe the government troops were at, starting at this knoll, uh, coming down, crossing the current A9, just where the boggy ground is, coming down in front of the wall garden uh, of the original house. So none of this area that, that is shown as a garden now would have been present. This would have been just field. It then comes to this area where, in front of Mackay, where we had these uh, musket balls found, and a very steep drop down in the slope. And we showed earlier that none of these musket balls could have been fired from this position down here. And the, clo and the, the, the furthest they could have been away is the position that we have them now plotted. And then we have just extended the line further down to show how, because we know Mackay kept a very straight line, we're standing here. Yeah. So we're looking from here along the bridge. Yep. Yeah. The line that Transport Scotland has chosen um, has really nothing to support it. We know from the accounts of the time that General Hugh Mackay rode his horse up and down the lines. Uh, we know from uh, our own analysis that this line fits very well with the archaeological evidence, but it also fits very well with Hugh Mackay's account of him riding up and down the line. The, the total drop from the left wing of the government force right through to the right wing is a maximum of about 10 metres, which over this distance is not very uh, great a distance at all. We're standing now right with our back towards the A9. You can just see the A9 behind us. We walk up to the A9 and we look back to the flag at this position. If you look back down towards <clears throat> where we were standing a minute ago, the <clears throat> lion rampant flag you can see down there is almost exactly a hundred paces from where we are, 80 meters. And that, so we're standing in the position where the Jacobites would have reached when General Hugh Mackay ordered his men to open fire. He ordered them to open fire at a hundred paces. So where, where we're standing is really the beginning of the main killing ground where from here down to the line rampant, the government line, this is when the, the Jacobites would have taken the most casualties. So we're standing right in the killing zone for this battle. And you've got to remember this, this line is now converging so as it, as it goes up this way it is converging with the A9. It's getting closer and closer. So it's getting closer and closer. Yeah. So the killing zone or where, where most of these guys, men lost their lives were between here and the A9. Exactly right. yeah. Yes so we've come out the other side. We cut across and we try to to get to the battle line here we're unable to and uh, we've plotted the position of the government troops continuing and it will be about another 20 meters on the other side of this fence we'll walk down and uh, we'll see where we can pick it up okay we started to come now to the other side of this uh, wooded area we've picked up where uh, the government line would have been at the time. So we're going to carry on here until the end, which is, we're cutting up towards the Guernic, which would have been the end of the government's line. The battle line is from here to the Guernic. You can see the flags here to my right. 
This marks the position of Hastings Regiment, which was on the extreme right wing of General Hugh Mackay's Scottish Government Army. Uh, if we pan round up with the hill, you can see the building uh, where I'm pointing over there in those trees. Uh, that is where the one of the arguments is that a sniper position occupied them. Further to my right, we're in amongst the trees here, we have the Gurneg. And the Gurneg is, there's really quite a steep uh, drop down into the Gurneg. So this would have been a great anchor point for the right wing of the government army. We are now standing approximately where on the left wing of the Jacobite force. We cross the A9 and we look down on the position of Hastings position from here, looking down to here. Uh, this position was occupied by the McDonald's of Slate. If we look down behind us here, we, you can see the flags. That's where we have plotted the position of Hastings Regiment, anchoring, anchoring the Scottish Government's right wing on the Gurneg, which is in those trees. Okay, so to summarise, what we've been doing today is that uh, we started off on the Knoll. Uh, we established this as being uh, the, the left wing of the Government's troops, where Lorda was stationed with Balfour. Uh, and we plotted up the line of the uh, probable front, uh, the, the line of the government troops, uh, and this was based on first of all the left wing with uh, Lord and Balfour, and then the the distribution of the musket shots in the centre in front of uh, Leven, and then again on the bank where we've been discussing previously where Mackay's left wing was, uh, uh, and the the very short distance to the the grouping of musket shots here. And we, of course, we know that Mackay is being, it was uh, particularly intent on making sure his, his line was very straight. So essentially we have created this line going through the, the battlefield. Uh, the backdrop of what you're seeing here is the 1945 aerial photography, uh, which was of, of course before the present A9. Uh, and, and again, here is, uh, we've also done, we've also plotted this into the very first ordnance survey map of the area which is around 1841 uh, and uh, one thing we've noticed is that there's very little change actually between the 1841 map and what we've seen in the aerial photography. So here we have, uh, this is the, the knoll uh, with all the archaeology that they found in terms of the, the shot and the buckles etc. Uh, we have the boggy ground, we have the original uh, house which was here with a, uh, a walled garden around it. Uh, we have Mackay's position here uh, with the, the very steep bank and where he was stationed with the, uh, with the, with the shot just in front of his, his line. And then we run on to where Hastings was and the Alt Gurnag. And so all of these backdrops were uh, intentionally done without the A9 present so that uh, we're not influenced in any way with regards to uh, the A9 uh, being as, uh, as, as a, a constraint in any way. So we're now then having a look at the modern day uh, site. So again, we have the front line going from the knoll uh, all the way across to the right wing. Uh, and as you see, of course, it's crossing the A9 position. So if we were considering what would uh, cause the least, least disruption to the archeology span based on this uh, prop proposed government uh, position or the front line of the government positions, it would actually be to um, for the, uh, the, the new A9 to come on the right-hand side and then cross over to the left-hand side. So uh, this, this, in our belief, would cause the least disruption to the battlefield. Okay, so uh, the other thing that uh, we need to consider is that uh, there's a difference in, in between a cut uh, formation for putting the A9 in. And we got, a, as for reference, we've got the original cut that they created here and we can see then from visiting the site that actually the cut causes far less disruption to, to, the, to the, uh, the area consumed by the road than a fill. Uh, the fill will actually, uh, inherently you can understand why that's the case because you have to have a stable slope for the, the fill, whereas the cut can almost be vertical. So it's better to cut the road in? It's, it's better to cut the road in than to create a fill over the landscape to support the road. Okay, and do you think it's possible, doable, to make put it make it cross over? I, I don't see why not. I don't see if there's any reason why it shouldn't uh, cross over.
But that's if you're interested in the battlefield. Absolutely, yeah. And if you're not, well... Then you go for the easiest solution. And also the other thing I think we should highlight is this is where we had the flag and that was 100 paces. So it really, all along here is where all the intense fighting exactly. was taken. So, so if, if they were to come to the south, then or, or straight away, you know, or, or, uh, they would be cutting into the, the battlefield where all the intense fighting is. If they went to the north, then as we've shown, this is the area that they were transiting as they were coming to the front line. So if they went here, they were cut, cut across here, uh, then starting to transit to the, the south side. So this would cause the least disruption, no doubt about it. And it may be worth just pointing out that this area here, uh, just to the, uh, the east of this road, that was used in the previous construction of the A9, that was used as a lorry park, a, a machine park. So all the archaeology there has been destroyed already. So that, that could easily be used as a crossover point. Yeah, so you just cross the A9 over to the south yeah. side.